first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And, um, Lord willing, this will be a, you know, pretty uh, quick and straight to the point lesson. I was watching this video that was done by the elder brother Manat Zakba, um, um, titled, There is no such thing as luck. Okay, hashtag good luck, hashtag bad luck. And uh, in the video, he basically goes into and, and explains, all right, with the scriptures about, you know, pretty much how, you know, you have a lot of people that believe in the superstition, you know, or if you do certain things a certain way or you stand a certain way, you walk under a ladder, you know, a black cat crosses the street in front of you, whatever the case is, you crack a mirror, you're going to have bad luck. All right, for whatever, you know, or if you do something like this, you're going to have good luck or this means this. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> as he goes into in the video, everything that happens to you, whether negative or positive, all right, whether good or bad, it comes from Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. It's not a matter of luck or, or or karma or any of that stuff. All right, there's the most high meeting out judgment based on your actions. Okay. But um, <clears throat> as he mentioned it, you know, it, it brought to mind, um, you know, a precept here in the book of Isaiah, which I'm going to go into, you know, dealing with uh, luck, all right, and fortune, which actually goes back to a Babylonian god, all right, or a Babylonian deity. Um, and actually, um, it was the uh, the elder Itazwam that actually brought this out. You know, that's how I found out um, <clears throat> in uh, Isaiah 65 and 11. Okay, and when you go into it, it reads... But ye are they that forsake the Lord, Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering onto that number. Okay, now, when you actually go into the word troop and number, pretty much this is this is Israel committing idolatry against um, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, basically, uh, basically offering sacrifices um, <clears throat> uh onto this the troop which let's go into that word uh when you go into the word troop okay you can see the word here god which is it's uh, uh similar if not the same spelling to the the name of gad the the the, the patriarch all right of the 12 one of the 12 tribes but when you go into it according to the blue letter at least um these are two different words um i believe the the word for Gad, the name of the son of Jacob is a different word uh, and it's um, differentiated by the number as you can see as well. All right. Um, but this this word here, Gad here, as you can see, it says it equals God of fortune and it specifies a Babylonian deity. Okay. A Babylonian deity. Um, <clears throat> and when you actually look him up, Gad, there's not too much information on him. All right. But it's known that this this uh when you go going back to Babylon and you know the uh, uh Semitic uh region you had different deities that they worshipped but as you can see it says Gad was the name of a pan Semitic god of fortune okay usually depicted as a male but sometimes as a female and is attested in ancient records of Aram which are the Syrians and Arabia. Gad is also mentioned in the Bible as a deity in the book of Isaiah 65 and 11, which uh, I just read. Uh, some translations simply call him the God of fortune as having been worshipped by a number of Hebrews during the Babylonian captivity, which um, this is exactly what uh, Jeremiah the prophet was warning when you read in the, in the, the letter of Jeremiah. This is what he was warning Israel, all right, when they got taken to captivity prior to them really uh, getting sent to Babylon. He warned them that when you go, you're going to see their different gods and different deities and, and, you know, how they worshiped and looked at. But, you know, don't follow those ways. However, as Israel stayed there, all right, for, for a, portion, a good portion of time up until the Lord put the spirit on Cyrus, all right, after he came up into power and, to, and the Babylonians were taken down and, and to make the decree for, the, for Israel to go back and rebuild the temple. At that point, you know, you had certain Israelites that 
you know, you had communities, all right, in, in that region of uh, Babylon, and you had certain Israelites that picked up these different religions, right? Yeah, I believe there's something called Second Temple Judaism or so. Let me see if I can find that. Yep, Second Temple Judaism. Um, and it says here, Second Temple. Let's close this out. Second Temple Ju uh, Judaism re refers to the Jewish religion as it developed during the Second Temple period, which began with the construction of the Second Temple around 516 BCE and ended with the Roman siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE. Now, um, uh, within around this time period, you had Jake coming back with different um, with different ideologies as well. I believe they also picked up the the, the you know the ways of Zoroastrianism, all right, and, and different forms of you know ideologies and, and so on and so forth coming back, okay, uh, which they picked up in Babylon, right. So going back here to the the deity, right, the Babylonian deity Gad, which is basically the god of fortune. All right, where you get the, the whole concept of luck, which is, oh, you know, you either have good fortune or bad fortune or good luck or bad luck, whatever the case is, actually, you know, goes back to this this uh, uh, deity, right, where um, basically when you go back, when you deal with the, you know, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Assyrians, most of the time they had gods for everything. All right, you have like Dagon, you're dealing with the fish. All right, you have the sun god, you got the god for fertility, god for, you know, um, wine, you know, god for, for, for riding and all of those things. So you pretty much had a god for everything. And if, and if you please the god, then he would benefit you, bless you in, in your favor. And if you angered the god, then you would get negative, right? So when you're dealing with Gad, pretty, I guess the concept is, well, if you, if you do what's pleasing to him, then you'll have good fortune. And if you don't, then you'll have bad fortune. Okay, but at the end of the day, like uh, like the elder Manasseh Zakba went into, today you got people that, that pretty much believe in it, which is a superstition. All right? And they stress themselves out over it. When you watch this video at the beginning, you'll see this woman here crying, all stressed out because she's saying she has crickets in her house and she can't kick them out because if she does, that's bad luck. So she has to politely ask the crickets to leave but they don't want to leave. What? I mean, what? <laughs> you a grown woman. You stressed out. You, I mean, yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, it says, Gad apparently differs, uh, deferred from the god of destiny, who was known as many. The root verb in Gad means cut or divide, and from this comes the idea of fate being meted out. So, when you go back to... Um, Isaiah 40, Slakia, Isaiah 65, when you go into the word troop, you have Gad, which here goes back to the Babylonian uh, deity or the god of fortune. Okay, now carrying on, right, so it says, But ye are they that forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering onto that number, right? So idolatry, they, they, you know, they sacrifice onto, you know, onto, onto this, this God or this troop or this deity, right? And, and offer a drink offering onto that number, which when you look into that word number, it's actually also making reference to another God, all right? Another Babylonian God, all right? Which in this sense, it says here, many, right? Uh, Manya, uh, God of fate or fortune, God of fate who the Jews worshipped in Babylon or Babylonia. All right, which we just which we just read over here, which, you know, they say that it's, uh, you know, many differs from Gad. Say Gad is uh, the god of fortune and many is the god of, uh, what's that, destiny or, you know, whatever, fate, you know, which when you when you do some more reading on it, though, they, they try to make claims as to the difference between the two, you know, but in any case, it just it's just uh, making a, a point as to the idolatry that Jake was committing. OK, but. Um, going back to the concept of luck or fortune, all right, as I was watching this video, you know, this, this precept came to mind, all right, because even going back all those years ago, that's what Jake was getting into. Of course, worshiping other deities as well, but this was uh, one of them as well, okay, Gad. 
So now to finish it off, when you go to Isaiah 45 and 7, it says here, I formed the light. All right. And this is dealing with the most high. Right. I formed the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So at the end of the day, OK, they know such thing as, oh, good luck, bad luck. You know, I, I, I stepped on a rat's tail. So now I'm bad. No, if bad things or evil things come your way, guess what? Who created it? The most high. Who sent it your way? The most high. Something good happens. You get delivered. You get blessed. That comes from the most high. That's the peace and that's the evil. That's the light and that's the darkness. The Lord does it all. And even those that worship these deities and these, they're really all just, just left-hand spirits that also serve the most high anyway. Okay, so it all comes from Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Ain't no such thing as, you know, these superstitions that, that people get into. All right. Now, there's different levels to it. Okay, there's, there's different gods and, and, and left-hand spirits that are real, that people worship. And they do, they do gain certain things from them. Okay, but overall to think that, oh, well, I, I, I walked under a ladder or I broke a mirror and now I'm afraid that I'm, I'm going to have bad fortune or bad luck or negative things are going to happen to me because of that. It's, that's pretty ridiculous, you know, and um, that's what happens. That's, as the scriptures say that, <laughs> you know, the gross darkness, the people, right, gross darkness shall cover the people. And this is the point where we're at. A faithless and perverse generation. In any case, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying and informative to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. Until next time, Shalom.